Okay, welcome back to Unit 2, and in this unit so far we talked about ancient uh, civilizations, the art of ancient civilizations, of the Bronze Age collapse, the art of the next period which you might call the Axial Age or the Archaic Age. We then, we also, that led to talking a little bit about uh, Greek ceramics, and then we had a whole unit on ceramics, um, and that led also to an even more in-depth discussion about the development from black figure to red figure. And that inevitably leads us to talking about shapes. So shapes are the design concept, or one of the overlying design concept for unit two. And first we're going to just kind of talk about shapes in a general sense, and then we're going to talk about the issue of figure ground. So we'll probably just be one part, like uh, one video, to do the, the shape part, that'll be pretty fast, and then two videos to finish out the, the figure ground, because figure ground can be kind of uh, complex and interesting. So let's uh, first kind of brainstorm a little bit about thinking about what are different types of shapes. Once again, if this was uh, a lecture that I was doing in class, I'd, this would be where I would call out and ask people to, to kind of think about different names before I would pop up my list. and I think that the thing that stands out the most to students is the idea of geometric shapes. For many students, geometric are pretty much it. Like when you na say name a shape, you know, they think of things that they can name geometrically, like a circle, a triangle, a square, a rectangle, shapes that can be defined by math. But anything, you know, that is a two-dimensional area is a shape. Um, it can be as regular as a geometric shape, like geometric shapes are very regular and like let's say a circle is about as regular a shape can get, right? But they can be as irregular, um, they could have, you know, as irregular as you could imagine. Um, and then everything in between. And so they can vary in lots of different ways. And what naming all the different kinds of shapes is not all that relevant. I think what's much more important is to think about how shapes are used. And I also think that it's often important to think about how, um, how shapes are created. So let's, uh, let's start with there. How do you create a shape? Um, and once again, this would be a good place for me to get feedback from, from the classroom. So, you know, on your own time, you could sit there and see if you could, you could pause the video and see if you could think of three main ways that shapes are created. Um, but for YouTube, we're just going to go right into it. Uh, the three main ways that I talk about, and there are some in-between stages, but I think that these pretty much cover it, right? The three main ways are delineation. That's the normal way we all think about making a shape, which is we take a line-based tool and we draw a line around it. Um, but in art, that's actually not the normal way to make shape. Color fill is actually the normal way, which is that you actually let's say you either paint that area, if you want that area to be that shape, you paint it all that color or that value, right? Um, and there are lots of different ways that you can color fill or value fill um, an area with a shape. You know, and you could do this by, you know, by either, you know, painting or cutting out a piece of paper, or you could also do it through negative shape, where like you have one piece of paper and then you cut out a negative window and you lay it over the top, and then that window creates a shape of two different colors. But there's another way, and actually when you look at this last way, it actually implies a whole host of different kinds of ways that our brain allows us to create shapes, or the implication of shapes, and that's through what grouping and implied shapes, right? There is no... Our eye sees two triangles here, but those two triangles don't really exist they only exist in our brain, right? There is, um, there's only an implication of a triangle being there. And even there, right, the sense that those three circles make a triangle is really up to us to choose to believe it. So that's an implied shape. So besides how do you create shapes, I'd say an even bigger question is how are shapes used? And there's like a ton that you could talk about, but I'm going to focus on two main topics. One is shape grouping or meta shapes, the way shapes group together to make larger shapes and how that's organized in paintings as a way to kind of like help people figure out what's going on in a painting and help them 
uh, help kind of organize the way a viewer sees a painting. So one, meta shapes. And the other is an issue in terms of how shapes are used is how explicit is the artwork about shapes, meaning, let me go to that for a second. Um, well, like this comparison right here, we'll get to it. Okay, let's start with meta shapes. So in the Raft of the Medusa, a work of art that we are going to see a number of times. We're going to talk about it in a number of different ways. So I'm not going to cover everything about it right here in terms of the politics and the history of this painting at the event that actually led up to it. Uh, basically, I'll give you in a very short nutshell, this is a painting about a ship, shipwreck and a rescue. Okay, so a bunch of people on a raft, hopefully about to get rescued. And, but what I want to talk about is the way that all the light shapes have a, this tendency to group together and to make these larger meandering shapes that move through the painting. And all the dark shapes have a tendency to do that as well. And that is a purposeful strategy. There's a whole history to that in art of where artists have organized their, their painting, not so much by object by object, but by groupings of lights and dark shapes. And this creates kind of a sinuous flow, fluid movement through the, um, you know, through the, the scene, which kind of slows down our viewing of it, makes it a little bit murkier and more twisting and wind, you know, as we wind through, and helps to kind of counterbalance the really strong geometric organization of the painting as well. We will be talking about the geometry of this painting as well at another point. So, meta shapes. So, meta shapes are generally, when we look at a lot of paintings, they're organizations of value. But we can also think of meta shapes as organizations of colors and of temperatures, right? Here we have a little bit of both, but there's a lot of like groupings where warm colors are all grouped together to make larger shapes, and then cool colors are all grouped together to make larger shapes, as well as light values grouped together and dark values grouped together. And how that gives us this kind of like, um, a, it gives us a, a way of seeing the scene in a non-literal kind of way and a way of kind of slowing down our viewing so that we have to kind of read it carefully. So meta shapes is one way that artists use shapes in their painting. And then the other one would be the how explicit and upfront is the artist about the fact that they're using shapes. Because here's the thing, every painting, every painting uses shapes, right? Every painting is, there is no woman here, there's no map here, there's no letter here, there's no chair there, right? None of that exists. All we have are shapes, right? Just shapes of color. But in this painting, when we look at it, we don't think of it that way. We think of it as a scene. Those shapes, in a way, are kind of hidden, embedded into the composition. And those shapes include these larger groupings of shapes, like the big kind of triangle that organizes her posture and her dress, right? and the big kind of grid structures, as well as every little small shape, like the shape, like that shape right there at the top of the letter, that little kind of rhombus shape. That's a shape, right? But we don't think of it as a shape. We think of it as a letter. Whereas in like, let's say Greek um, red figure ceramics, the, the clear explicit shapeness of all of the representation is much clearer. The artist is much more upfront and honest about the fact that yes, I'm making images of people, but they are fundamentally just groupings of shape. Okay, and so when we when we look at paintings, um, ooh, I'm getting close to the end. When we look at paintings, whether they are really very abstracted paintings or representational paintings or representational paintings that really try to create a sense of mood and atmosphere and space, that one of the questions we need to ask is, well, how how honest and upfront is the artist being about the use of shapes? Or how much is the artist kind of hiding and embedding those shapes within the illusion of the space and the form and the light that they're creating? Uh, so here are two examples where the artist is creating a representation and it has a certain kind of mood and atmosphere, but at the same time, in very different ways, these two artists are saying, look, this is just made up of lots of big and small decisions of shape. Okay, that is the end of the first part, just on shape. Next, we're gonna to get to figure ground.